What happens when you take 10 of the quickest and fastest unmodded drag cars from the game BeamNG.Drive and try to take them on a cross map cruise, making several 8th mile time runs along the way? Will they survive it? Hello everybody, welcome to BeamNG for the 3rd and 4th stages of the Shifts and Giggles West Coast USA Dragon Drive. Using 10 of the game's quickest unmodded drag cars and starting at the West Coast Lighthouse, I'm driving each of the cars across the map making 6 1 8 mile timed hits before finishing at the drag strip with the quickest average time winning the event. Once I've fired up each of the cars and pulled out of the Lighthouse parking lot, there was no more tuning, repairing or resetting and the engines were kept running in between each stage. We got things kicked off in the last episode with each of the cars completing the first stages of this marathon where it was a Chevetta Scintilla putting up the best two stage average of 4.899 seconds followed closely by the always tough and soon to be hurting Bruck El Moonhawk. On the bottom of the list so far we find the gavel burnside known as Porky which is there after briefly having to abort launch during its stage one hit past the refinery. By the end of the bridge stage it too was trailing smoke as it made its way to the next two stages. If you want to build any of these cars for yourself, you can. The entire builds are in the recent fastest drag car series here on the channel. I'm using these very same builds here, but each car is now fitted with maximum 28 by 10 inch grip all pro drag slicks from Neos Drag Parts. That offers the best grip for the unprepped street stages and don't require hours of retuning the cars. If you enjoy this and find it interesting, hit that thumbs up to tell YouTube this is some good shit. If this is the kind of stuff you're into, subscribe to the channel for more. With all that out of the way, let's get right into it with the third and fourth stages of the West Coast Dragon Drive. Starting with number 10, the Smoking Pink Burnside Porky. This piggy packs 423 cubic inch V8 supercharged on nitrous and makes 1878 horsepower in peak quarter mile trim. After nearly taking out a pole to start the refinery stage, Porky put up a decent 508 on the bridge before taking some engine damage as the passive finish line cones. Let's see if it's really as bad as it looks here on stage 3. A nice wheels up launch but a 5.340 is a long ways off that 508 from stage 2. For what it's worth, the smoke doesn't appear to have gotten worse, I mean it does launch pretty well. This piggy's definitely feeling a little sick however, so we'll hit it with a little bit of vitamin N, as in nitrous, and run it again. A 5.368 for a new average of 5.404, still number 10 on the list, but still running. I don't see it getting better for the Burnside going forward, but it's possible it might outlast one or two of these other cars if I crash them. Okay, next out is number 9 on the list, the sporty little Chevetta Bolide. With a 3.9 liter twin turbo V8 on nitrous, this little Italian sports car packs almost 1700 horsepower and quarter mile drag racing trim. The Bolide has the disadvantage of using a 5 speed manual transmission, so it's never going to be competitive here. It will be interesting to see if it's able to survive the abuse of several screaming clutch dump launches. So far so good, it's been consistent and kind of fun to drive, let's see how it goes on the highway. A 5.654, that's the slowest pass yet for the bleed and that will drop it behind the burn side into number 10 with a 5.48 average. A 
I have to wonder if either I forgot to turn the nitrous on or it's starting to hurt itself a little. Let's take it to the tunnel and find out. That answers that, a 5.385 doesn't take back the 9 spot, but it does prove that I'm an idiot and turned off the nitrous before the last pass. Nothing wrong with this car at the moment as it rolls through to the final stages. We head back into town and bring out number 8, the Gavril D-Series. The D-Series packs a 6.9 liter V8, is supercharged on nitrous, and makes over 2,000 horsepower and quarter mile trim. Coming in with a 5.257 average so far, we didn't see anything all that spectacular from the D-Series on the first two stages, running in the 5.2s each time. If there was a silver lining, is that the truck seems to be in good shape as it pulls out of the highway for stage 3 and 4. Another 5.2 for the D-Series, a 5.243 to stay number 8 so far. Again, nothing dramatic with that pass, the truck goes straight down the lane. There was a little puff of smoke through the finish cones, but it's not smoking down the road towards the tunnel stage. The D-Series goes a 5.260, showing some consistency through four stages. We can see some smoke through the finish line cones on that pass, and this time, it looks like it's not going away. Add another one to the injured list here going into the next episode. Okay, the next car to head out onto the highway is number 7 on the list, the Abishu 200BX. This sporty little thing comes with a tiny 2 liter inline 4, turbocharged on nitrous, and makes just under 1500 horsepower and quarter mile racing trip. A 5.22 average so far likely means that this thing isn't going to contend for quickest car of the event, but this is about stress testing the equipment as much as it's about competition. Making two decent passes so far without killing the tiny four cylinder or blowing the clutch out isn't so bad. Let's see what we got for stage three. A 5.561 for the 200BX to drop behind the D-Series into 8th place. I have no idea what the issue was there. We've seen the nitrous spray before launching and there's no smoke from the car through the finish line. We'll have to see what happens heading to the tunnel for stage four. That was better, a 5.231 to close the gap sub to the hurting D-Series in seventh. I do have double tapped the nitrous button like a moron before stage 3 because the 200BX is running just fine through 4 stages so far. 
Coming out next is our number six, the 5.0 livery Buck Bastion. With a 6.5 liter V8 twin turbos and nitrous, this thing can make over 2100 horsepower with a quarter mile drag racing tune up in it. Don't let that 5.19 second average fool you. After an impressive 5.06 on the opening stage, I screwed up and left the nitrous off for the second hit on the bridge. With an unhealthy vitamin N deficiency, the Bastion only managed a 5.334 not over for the Bastion though, it's a fast car and at least one of the cars in front of it on the list is already hurting parts. Let's see what it's got for stage 3. The Bastion is picking up the pace with a 5.042 second blast down the highway to bring it closer to picking up a position after my screw up on the bridge. See if we can keep that kind of performance up going to the tunnel. Nice, a 5.009 for the Bastion, coming ever so close to the fours on that pass good enough to move it into a tie with the Barstow for number 5. This car is looking good. We're getting a little spin off the line, but it's straight down the lane after that. And no sign of any engine damage so far. Next up we have the Garrel Barstow, with a 423 cubic inch V8 supercharged on nitrous, the Barstow makes nearly 1900 horsepower and quarter mile race trim. Using this off launch setup, this thing is capable of low 7 second nearly 190 mile per hour performances on the drag strips. Barstow put up two good passes so far to make the top half of the list in number 5. If the motor stays happy, the Barstow could be in good shape. Let's see if that continues on the highway. The 5.113 is a good consistent pass, but does drop the Barstow to number 6, just 0 .001 behind the Bastion. There's almost no tire spin from this thing, and it never sounds like it's working too hard, so it may still be in good shape for a top half finish. On to stage 4. Improving to a 5.103 and jumping back in front of the Bastion 5.001. Tiny puffs of smoke off the tires going into the tunnel and no further sign of problems with the bar still heading for the final stages. That brings us to number 4 on the list and that is a Gavel Blue Buck. The Blue Buck is fitted with a 423 cubic inch V8 supercharged on nitrous and makes nearly 1800 horsepower a quarter mile racing trim. The Blue Buck put up back to back 5.0 second passes running a 506 to kick things off on the refinery stage and approving to a 503 on the bridge. Good news, besides making some pretty good hits so far, is that the Blue Buck seems to be in pretty good shape coming into the highway stages. The Blue Buck slows to a 5.098 on stage 3 and falls a little further back of the Grand Marshal and a little closer to the Barstow in the standings.
Still no visible damage, however, so that's good to see. Let's see what's got for stage four. A 5.064. That's the second best pass so far from the blue buck, and a good sign after making its lowest last stage. Overheating is a big concern with these older cars, and I'm impressed that we're not seeing that with the Blue Buck so far. Back into town in our number 3 car on the list, the Gavro Grand Marshal. The Grand Marshal runs a supercharged 6.9 liter V8 that makes over 1800 horsepower and quarter mile racing trim. It's so put down some pretty impressive runs so far, including a 4.939 on the bridge stage to find itself only behind the Moonhawk and Scintilla in the rankings. If it stays healthy, the thing could give those two a run for this. Grand Marshall runs a 5.020, but you likely heard the news just before the finish line cones on that pass. Our taxi is taking some damage after putting up three really good passes to start this endurance test. It was on a nice pass until about halfway to the cones, and you can see the smoke. We'll have to see how much that slows the car heading into the tunnel stage. An off pace 5.227 for the Grand Marshal, slipping towards losing that top 3 spot to a much healthier Blue Buck going into the final stages. It's good that they've yet to invent smell vision because that one would have us choking out. Not smelling much better here in town is our number 2 car, the usually badass but possibly broken Bruckel Moonhawk, packing a 448 cubic inch V8, supercharged on nitrous, a quarter mile trim this car makes over 2400 horsepower, and with the first two stages here, this thing was a beast, laying down low ET of stage 1 with a 4.912 before running another 4 second pass on the bridge despite its engine taking damage halfway down. Will it hold together through the highway stages? We'll have to see. The other cars that are smoking have all fallen off a fair bit. A 4.972 on stage 3 for the Moonhawk. For a car that's smoking as badly as it is, that's a pretty great pass. I wonder if the loss of power is helping it with traction a little. Let's see if I can hold together for a little while longer and I'll keep that going into stage 4. I.189 for the Moonhawk, and that might be a sign of even more trouble going forward. It looked like a decent enough pass, it's just gotta be getting down on power the more I run it. 
We'll have to see next episode if we're able to get these injured hot rods through a bit of a cruise in two more passes. With the Moonhawk not looking so good anymore, this has to be the easy favorite to drive away with us now. It's the Chavetta Scintilla. This thing is using a 5 liter V8 twin turbos and nitrous, makes over 2400 horsepower and quarter mile trim. Last episode here on the West Coast streets, it made back to back runs well into the 4 second zone and as far as I can tell, shows no sign of stress or damage coming into the highway stages here in this episode. Switching lanes and driving back to a 5.007. Bit of a handful to drive, but the Scintilla is showing no signs of other troubles heading into stage 4 for the last run of the episode. Low BT the event so far with a 4.804 second blast into the tunnel for this Chavetta Scintilla. That was a nice pass to end the episode with, much straighter than the previous run and it shows on the timesheet. Okay, thank you for watching this here today. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. Tune in for the final stages next week. Until next time, keep it in your own damn lane.